this is cool, but it's not great. This is great. You're probably wondering why it's dark. Well, today we are talking about my YouTube setup and I'm going to show you all how I go from this to this. Let's get into it. So we're gonna talk about the camera I use and we're gonna talk about the lighting I use. I am in a very confined space. I shoot my YouTube talking heads in my bedroom. I do not have an extra room in my house. I don't have my studio space yet. I am getting at the end of the year. I am speaking it into existence that I will have my first commercial property, studio space, downtown LA in the fall. So this is for the people who may not have a bunch of space to really deck out a whole room or studio space and you're in your bedroom and you're trying to figure out how to create a creative YouTube studio. Well, this video is going to be for you. So let's first get into the lighting and then we'll talk about the cameras. And if you're wondering what I'm using to control all of these lights, I am using the Citus Link. Um, that is an app that you can use on your phone. If you have Aperture, any kind of lights from Aperture, you can use this app to control all of your lights. So you don't have to go to each light to do so. So I am using the Citus Link app. So I'm gonna turn all the lights off. So as you can see, the first couple of lights are my practicals. And what practicals are, are pretty much lights that will already be in the atmosphere. So a lamp is a practical, you know, just kind of like the things that you will already see in your space. So this is my desk. You will pretty much already see a desk light. You know, my desktop is on. And I added a neon light because, you know, I do what you love. So this whole section is a lot, uh, lighting up this whole area to my left in like this very warm tone. Let's talk about the key light, my main light. So for that light, I am using the Aperture 200D and the D stands for daylight. I am mixing color temperature because again, this is more warm, more tungsten vibes and this is more daylight. So I'm mixing the color temperature a little bit, but um, I love mixing color temperature, so that's why I did it. And the Aperture, the Amaran 200D <clears throat> is literally only at 25%. It is three feet away from me on a light stand and I have a big octo box on the light and it's spilling all onto the image. Now, if I wanted it to be directional, I would add a grid. This is kind of the grid that you can add onto the light if you want it to be more directional and pretty much only hit me and not my overall image. But as you can see, it's very dark in my room. And when I'm talking to you all, I don't want it to be such a dark mood because I painted my wall navy. Um, and so that already brought more of a contrast and darker vibe. And so for me, I didn't want to add the grid because I wanted the light to be able to just spill wherever it needed to spill. So as you can see, I just added the grid and it drastically changed the overall image. It made it way darker. So I would have to bump up the intensity of the light. I was at 25 and now I'm at about 77 or let's go to 65%. So it now it looks back to how it did earlier. The only thing is it is a lot more contrasted. And as you can see, it feels more directional, but this is not wrong. It's just not, I just didn't want to have a directional light. I like for the overall feel and vibe to feel like a natural flow of light. And that is pretty much it. That is the 200D and 25% and it is on daylight. So it's at 5,300 Kelvin. And then from there, I go to my backlight, which is the Amaran 100X. <clears throat> the X is allowing me to do daylight or tungsten. So I decided again to go warm because I only want my key to be daylight. The goal with the daylight was to match the daylight that is coming from the window. So overall, it would make it feel of like more a natural feel of like, oh, it's actually natural light but then I'm using like tungsten colors for my practical. So the backlight is the Amaran 100X and this is literally on 2%. You could probably see it. Look at you could probably see it back there, but I'm hiding from it, which is great. And it's on 2% illuminating a picture that is actually white. Just to add a little umph, a little texture back there. So I'm not sucked into the background, into that navy abyss. And sometimes it's those subtle small things that really kind of help the overall image. It's always great to think about things like that. So I just added it and it really makes the image pop and it makes the navy wall pop a little bit more than not having it at all. Cause that white just kind of falls into the background, but now it kind of adds a little pop. And then the last light that I want to talk about outside of the practicals and my key and my backlight is going to be 
another practical which is the mc4 travel kit aperture light that i have i talk about this in my tech teens tuesday i love these lights you can use these lights for practicals you can use them as accent lights you can use them for whatever you need to use them for but i added a little color this time and that is uh i added a purple hue to offset the warm that's coming from the neon sign and that is at about 20 percent and so if I was to go up, it might be a little too much for me. So I think 20% is great. And again, without it, it still looks good. Without it, it's just like, it's a key light. But with it, it kind of adds a little bit more and it, it kind of gives you a little bit more definition in contrast to your image. And those are two small lights. Again, I think that one was about 200. The MC4, you can get the whole kit for, I think, three or 400. Um, but you don't have to do the extras like I'm doing, but again, without them, it's just like, this is cool, but it's not great. This is great. <laughs> and so that is pretty much it. So if I turn it all off, this is what you get. And if I turn it on, this is what you get. Now, when it comes to my audio, I am using the Shure microphones, kind of like a podcast mic, and I have my stand that is always connected to my desk. So if I was not making a YouTube video and I was just editing and using my desk, I would literally just swivel it and it would just rest and I would compact it. And so I wanted to do that because I didn't want to always have to like try to set up everything. And with this, it's just always here. And I don't always have to be like, where's my mics? Are my mics charged? It's XLR, so it goes directly into my camera. And that's it. For my camera, I'm using the Sony FX3 with the Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Now I know that this is a crop sensor lens. However, I ain't really got no Sony lenses, so I need Sony to send me some. And until then, I gotta use the lenses I was using for my Black Magic. So this is the 18 to 35 and I kick it on the 35 so you don't see the um, vignette that comes with it. Um, but I think it still works and it's on a 1.8 because I do want to have depth and the mic connects to the Sony XLR handle and that is pretty much it. I have it on the Peak Design tripod. I do have an indie filter on and I do have a diffusion filter on as well and that is it. So it sounds like a lot but it's really not. I used to use the 300D, the Aperture 300D, but it took a lot of setting up for the lights. The 200D is just a plug and play, so it makes it so much easier. Um, my consistency of making YouTube videos decreased because I had to, I dreaded always having to set up everything. So now with this, I don't have to dread that because everything is like plug and play which is great. So that is my YouTube setup. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, all of this, all of this is extra. You don't have to do this. It's really just the key and having like a nice backlight. But if you do have little small lights that you can add to really just add texture and contrast and definition um, to add depth to your video, that is always great. And that's just my DP side coming in. But that is pretty much my YouTube setup. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Definitely like this video. Leave a comment down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.